All right, you guys, this is a genus of rice fish, uh, species specific. This is your Aresius ware, uh, or commonly known as your blue daisies rice fish. They're not very commonly found, especially here in the states uh, within the U.S., uh, as far as availability. A lot of times these you find oftentimes imported overseas and so forth. However, I have really taken a liking over the past year or so uh, with this specific species due to the fact you can see there that they are very active. I find that they're not difficult at all to breed uh, given the appropriate conditions which I'll go ahead and link down in the description below to a video which I did uh, really focusing on how to breed uh, this specific uh, fish. Uh, you can see here a lot of the fry grow out. They do not take that long. Uh, I find given the appropriate conditions, the appropriate water parameters, the appropriate food, uh, which is discussed in more detail uh, within that video. As you can see here, these guys are actually within a 10 gallon tank, uh, top of leaf, just providing a good antibacterial properties as well as um, slightly acidifying the water. I find that they do. Um, but uh, it's really not in there as far as a buffering component. I just find that they enjoy grazing off from it uh, as well as just kind of adding that uh, extra cushion as far as uh, a natural antibiotic agent uh, within these uh, water parameters. Uh, so you can see several fry here. I got more over here in this tank which isn't going to show up too well because of the light. Uh, however, if we try to focus here, you can see the activity. Uh, just below there's a bunch of duckweed here that I do have to remove from that um, however just a quick recap uh, I do recommend that you go ahead and take a look at the uh, the video down in the description below and uh, provide you with a better understanding on how to specifically breed if that is your ultimate goal um, these are uh, very unique in the way that they actually do breed um, and uh, there's a couple of different methods for which you can actually obtain once they get to the appropriate age and size, uh, of course, as far as breeding. I do recommend that you do start out with a group of uh, anywhere between five and eight to get a decent ratio uh, for males and females. I do personally enjoy keeping these guys, although they're not really an aggressive, uh, known to be an aggressive species of fish. However, I just personally enjoy keeping them as a species only tank. Um, just get a lot of these guys. They are very active. Uh, I do feed them all from tetracolor granules. I do feed them on microworms, vinegar eels, uh, especially at this size, even a little bit of baby brine shrimp. Uh, you can feed them um, even Daphnia. You can feed them, feed them uh, even some uh, frozen foods uh, kind of broken up as a treat. However, I wouldn't go too heavy. Always keep a balance between uh, your carbohydrates and proteins. Uh, I find with most species of fish, and at least for me personally, uh, within the many years I've been breeding and keeping various uh, uh, genuses and species of fish uh, throughout my, my time within the uh, hobby. However, uh, these guys do phenomenally well. As you can see here, sponge filter, 10 gallon tank, um, and so forth uh, just maintain good water chemistry and uh, these guys will do phenomenally well for you I mean these are not too far off here uh, from breeding age and size and uh, again I don't know if their their true colorations are really showing up here uh, I do keep these guys right around uh, mid 70s and they do phenomenally well they'll breathe in that all day long I've even uh, kept some of my dominant uh, uh, groups, my breeding groups, uh, in temps uh, in the low 70s. We're between 70 and 73, and they, they do just fine in those conditions, I find. So with that being said, you guys, enjoy. Check out everything down in the description below, and we'll talk to you on the next one.